But let's take a look at the nylon lab here. We're going to be starting with Sebacol chloride. And it's a diacyl chloride. We're going to be reacting that with a diamine. And the diamine that we're using is hexane 1,6 diamine. Now let's take a look at the mechanism. So we're going to be forming nylon by an interfacial polymerization. There's many different nylons out there. And the nylon that we are making this week is a nylon 16. I should have had that up here. This is a 6.10. And I'll tell you what that means here in just a moment. Uh, there's different numbers for the nylons, and they will have slightly different properties. <clears throat> the reaction here, we will also have sodium hydroxide present as a base. So let's take a look at our mechanism. The mechanism is the lone pair on the amine will attack a carbonyl and we kick the electrons up onto the oxygen. doesn't matter which end we go to. Those electrons are going to kick back in and reform the carbonyl and kick the chlorine off. That's our leaving group. Now we need to get rid of the extra proton that's on the nitrogen, and that's the, what the base is for. The base is going to grab that extra proton. So we've formed an amic group. see we have made an amide right here. Well this will react again. We still have an acyl chloride on one end. We still have an amine, primary amine there on the other end. Either end can react again. The acyl chloride can react with more of the hexane diamine or amine here can react with more of the sebacol chloride. So this will go again. do more of the diamine. This can react on the other end here of the acyl chloride. So this is going to react many, many times. So this is going to go on, make another amine group, and then I'll have an amine left again. That can react with more of the sebacol chloride. And so this reacts just 
over and over and over again so that we wind up making a polymer piece of that polymer and this will go on and on and on I can't draw the full molecule up you know polymers have molecular weights of 100,000 200,000 maybe even 300,000 but you can see there's some number of repeating units all the way down the chain and I've drawn some of it here and so here is what's repeating. Let me put that in parentheses. There's some number, I'll just use an N there, there's some number of these units that are uh, repeating all the way down the chain. Now, I think you can, if you're looking at that repeating unit, you can probably see where we get the nylon 610. The nylon 610 is the number of carbons. There's six carbons between these two nitrogens. And then between the next two nitrogens, you've got the eight CH2s and the two carbonyls. There's 10 carbons there. It's a nylon 610. There's, like I said, there's many, many different nylons. We could have different number of carbons there in between. And they'll have slightly different properties. Um, so this is a polyamide. Kevlar is another polyamide. It's got some benzene rings in there instead of alkyl chains. And you know Kevlar is used as bulletproof vest. So you can see it would have a lot, lot different properties uh, depending on what the groups are, how many carbons you have and everything in between. Um, most nylon, like a nylon 610, this could be used, uh, nylon can be used for ropes, uh, fishing line, all of that type of stuff. But if we get to the more rigid Kevlar, it can be used as bulletproof vest. So, uh, so that's our nylon that we will be making this week. So 